Now, welcome everybody. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time of your busy schedules to, uh, to join this webinar for Redpoint Valves. Um, my name is Jiske van Dura. I'm an account manager for Redpoint and um, I'm here together with uh, Tim Komen, who is an experienced sales engineer and uh, Pepijn Esman, who is our engineering manager. So um, yeah, we're very excited to tell you more today about uh, our great product. And um, this is actually the first uh, webinar since Redpoint brand joined uh, the Trillium Flow Technologies family uh, last year in 2021. And um, yeah, today we will explain what Redpoint can do and, and how our unique products and services can help in your, um, in your industry processes. Um, so this is um, uh, our head office from Redpoint uh, in, in Zoetermeer in the Netherlands. Redpoint uh, has been around since uh, 1987, so 35 years. And um, since March of last year, uh, Redpoint has, uh, has joined Trillium. Um, all the activities of Redpoint uh, happen under one roof. So in this building, you have the engineering department, um, but uh, also the sales department, procurement, um, but also production, assembly, and testing happens uh, in the same building. And uh, the size of the company is that we are with about 50 uh, full-time employees. So like I mentioned, Redpoint is, um, is, is part of the, the Trillium Flow Technologies uh, family since last year. And um, yeah, Trillium is, uh, is of course very well known uh, for their, uh, not only their valve uh, brands, but also uh, pumps and actuation. They're very strong in, in, in the power uh, industry, in oil and gas and in other general industries. And um, yeah, they are known for their, for their high-end uh, quality uh, products and service oriented um, uh, business. And uh, Redpoint fits well in, in, in that philosophy. So if you would like to know something more about the, the Trillium Flow Technologies uh, products, and uh, yeah, let your local salesperson know. And um, of course, today we're going to, uh, to tell you more about uh, the Redpoint brand. So the markets for Redpoint, yes, we, we, we of course are very strong in, in, uh, in the upstream, but we also do a lot in downstream. We, uh, we hold an, uh, an API 6A uh, monogram license for, for well-adding Christmas tree applications. But we do also a lot in, in oil and gas, um, in the petrochemical um, business, and also a lot in, in, in the, on the chemical side. Um, we have also uh, certain applications and, and valve ranges specified for, uh, for example, fertilizer industry, um, PTA, uh, cryogenic valves, oxygen. Uh, another thing that we see uh, more and more nowadays is hydrogen. It's an upcoming market. Uh, of course, a dangerous medium, but um, yeah, necessary in, in of course, uh, all the climate uh, goals that are, that are out there. And a difficult medium, uh, also fugitive emissions, a very important uh, topic for us. So um, yeah, this is, uh, this is what, what uh, Redpoint is, uh, is mainly focused on with regards to the markets. So Redpoint is, is located uh, in the Netherlands, uh, Central Europe in Zoetermeer, um, very close by to, to the harbors in, in, in Rotterdam and, and, and the airport in, uh, in Schiphol in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, we, we have started, of course, our business in the Netherlands with the refineries and, and, and the chemical plants in, in the Rotterdam area, uh, and also in Germany, where, where there is a big sector uh, in, in, that, in that way. And yeah, gradually we expanded more and more uh, towards other areas uh, globally. Um, for example, Norway offshore, um, in the south of Europe, in Spain, we do uh, we do a lot of business um, with with the Dow's, with the with the with the Repsols, with the BPs. Um, yeah, later on we also expanded outside of Europe. Um, so, for example, we do a lot in in the US, uh, in in the Houston area. Um, in Canada, we, we are strong uh, on, on the East Coast with, with the platforms, uh, for example, Hebron or Hibernia. And uh, in the West, we do a lot of business for the oil sands. But also on the other side of the world, um, if you look at China with, with the big um, uh, coal to chemical industry, uh, oxygen valves, uh, PTA. 
So there, actually, you see that they import a lot of valves uh, or a lot of valves from us uh, towards their plants instead of uh, what you normally see uh, the other way around. So we have uh, on the slide, you can see some um, references or at least the uh, companies where we are uh, uh, approved for and supply to. And if you need a certain reference list, then um, yeah, please let us know, then we can uh, we can provide you this. Um, so Tim, um, yeah, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about the strong points of Redpoint and uh, also about our product range. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank uh, you thank for you. the introduction. Uh, so I will tell a little bit more about uh, who we are and what we do as a company. Uh, Redpoint is active uh, in a niche market uh, as a specialist. Uh, we are a true valve manufacturer and we understand that downtime can have costly consequences for, for plant owners. Uh, so our focus lies on the fast track delivery of the non-commodity valves. So the valves that are not on stock and uh, which are machined yeah, basically by mass production. Um, and those valves, we supply them at the highest quality. So you will get valves engineered uh, to fit for your purpose. Uh, so to further explain our unique selling points, let's take a look at the following uh, flowchart. So if you have a need for valves and you cannot find those valves on stock anywhere, and the customer does not have the time to wait um, for the long lead bulk suppliers, uh, then approaching Redpoint uh, will definitely be a good idea. Uh, in, the, in the scenario where valves can be found from stock, uh, it's important to know whether these um, valves are in accordance with the customer specifications. Uh, if they're not and, and the customer is uh, not willing to accept any deviations, uh, then Redpoint should be approached uh, to provide a solution. Um, yeah, the, the last scenario is uh, in case, yeah, the valves uh, are not meeting the specs and deviations are acceptable, then uh, approaching Redpoint is not, uh, not a good plan. Um, yeah, also, um, yeah, sorry, next one. Uh, they also have uh, applica uh, application driven RFQs. Um, so, um, yeah, Redpoint is specialized in severe and critical applications. Uh, we have product lines developed and which are available and, and we can offer those fine tune, uh, fine tune them based on the actual operating conditions. Uh, so to ensure that we manufacture a valve that's best fit for your purpose. So if you're looking for a valve in any of those applications and, and considering the criteria from the previous slide, you have, um, yeah, you have, uh, you should approach Redpoint to, to offer a solution for you. There's also an option um, if an OEM supplier is not willing or able to offer. Uh, for example, we have supplied uh, in the past uh, uh, an Inquinel swing check valve with a zirconium trim to uh, an end user in uh, South Korea. It was for an acetic acid uh, application. And uh, yeah, other big suppliers like Crane and Flowserve, they declined to participate to offer um, yeah, for that particular valve. So yeah, then um, our product range, uh, we, we supply a broad range of valves for, for your applications. So our sizes, they start at a quarter inch and we go up to about 16 inch. Uh, the pressure range is from NZ class 150 up to uh, class 4500. So that's about 10,000 PSI. Uh, the temperature range, uh, we start at uh, the really cold temperature. So the cryogenic minus 196 Celsius and we go up to 816 uh, degrees Celsius, Celsius. So that's about the, the limit of the SME uh, B1634. So ball valves, uh, yeah, they're very versatile and we see them used in, in many different applications. Uh, our supply, it doesn't stop at just the floating ball valves, but we also manufacture a trunium mounted ball valves. So in both soft and metal sheeted option. Uh, within that trunium mounted valve range, uh, we can offer a single ball, double block and bleeds, or double isolation and bleed configuration, or a double ball, double block and bleed, so two balls. Um, so depending on what the customer prefers, we can supply the valves as a side entry or an end entry configuration. 
Um, sometimes, um, well, considering easy maintenance or when valves are welded in the pipeline, there can be a preference for a top entry valve construction. That's also something that we can offer and where we can comply with the client's requirements. So that's applicable for, for every ball valve in our scope. Um, we can manufacture them with many different end connections, and we can offer a diversity of operation methods. So yeah, besides the standard two-way valves, so the straight port valves, uh, we also have three-way valves in our scope, and we can even supply four-way valves if needed. Uh, the gate valves, yeah, gate valves, they are uh, available with the standard wedge configurations, so like the, the solid and the flexible wedge, uh, but in certain application, uh, a customer can prefer uh, a through conduit valve. Um, so that's also something that Redpoint can offer. Uh, in general, you see gate valves supplied with bolted bonnets, uh, but due to various reasons, there can be an alternative requirement. For example, in, in specific applications or in applications with higher pressure, uh, there can be a preference for either a welded bonnet or a pressure sealed bonnet valve. We can even take it a step further. For example, uh, if you're worried about fugitive emission, uh, then Redpoint can offer their bellow sealed valve. Uh, so that will ensure that you have a valve with a, a zero emission. Uh, globe valves are also uh, widely used in plants. Um, our strength there lies within the on-off and the equal percentage valves. Uh, they are available in many different configurations as well, like uh, the straight type, the wide types, and the angle types. Um, similar to the gate valves, uh, we supply globes in many different uh, type of bonnet constructions. Check valves, yeah, they are available in many different types. So depending on, on your, um, your application, uh, the pressure uh, in, your, in your piping and, and your piping size, there are different options to choose from. So our supply, it exists off, but it's not limited to uh, a swing check valve, piston check valve, uh, and a dual plate check valves. Those are, those are the, the most common uh, check valves that we, that we sell. Um, but also ball check valves and nozzle check valves are inside our scope of supply. Um, besides the standard regular metal seated um, check valves, we also have option to offer them with soft seats. So yeah, uh, we just talked about um, the strong points of Redpoint. So being the, the fast track uh, supplier, uh, exotic materials, non-commodity valves. Uh, so yeah, Jeske is going to, uh, yeah, going to tell you a little bit more about these points. So Jeske, can you please take over? Uh, yeah, thank you, Tim. And um... Yeah, like they mentioned, uh, uh, the, the first uh, um, strong point, red point, what he mentioned was, uh, was fast track delivery. So red point, uh, normal delivery time for, for our valves is, is about six to 10 weeks. And um, yeah, sometimes we can do it uh, a bit quicker um, depending on, on the workload. And, and sometimes uh, for projects, it's a little bit longer. But in general, we always try to offer within the, the, the six to 10 weeks uh, range. So some examples of what we have uh, supplied. Um, well, uh, on, on the top uh, picture, you see some, some gate valves, uh, high pressure one inch um, with, a, with a special stainless steel 321. Uh, it was a, a series of 21 pieces and uh, we have delivered those in, uh, in 10 weeks. And below that, you can see a, a metal seated uh, tree mounted ball valve, eight inch, 600 pounds reduced bore. Um, that was also supplied in, in 10 weeks delivery time for, for an, uh, an oil sense application. And um, yeah, that, that was also something that, uh, that, that is a normal delivery for us. Um, yeah, this example is, is more special. Uh, it's, it's something that we have supplied uh, uh, to, to an, an onshore power plant. And um, it was, a, it was a, a scope of five line items of gate, globe, uh, um, uh, gate and globe valves, uh, all with bellows sealed, all with electric actuators. And uh, the one on the right, you can even see that that was a, a, a 12 inch, 1500 pound valve. So that is a quite a big valve from itself. And um, yeah, that one also needed to be fitted with a bellow sealed. 
So uh, yeah, even those kind of uh, uh, difficult um, uh, projects can be uh, can be handled by us. And uh, yeah, this is very uncommon to see such a big valve with the with a bellow seal, and also with the actuator on top. Um, I think the the height of this construction was about uh, uh, was over three meters high. So it was a special uh, special fast track. Um, project and, and we supplied this project uh, with the five line items in 16 weeks. Um, yeah, and, and in some uh, critical applications, a uh, stem packing alone is, is not enough to, to prevent uh, unwanted situations in case of a leakage. Um, and uh, yeah, those unwanted situations can be, for example, uh, a loss of medium or, or pollution to the environment, um, but also let's not forget the uh, danger for, for plant employees. And um, in those cases, you uh, you often see that they require a, a bellow shield, uh, and and this can provide a solution to create a fully uh, fully tight primary seal uh, for the valve uh, stem. So yeah, for the people who are joining and and are not familiar with bellows, uh, a bellows is is created from from multiple layers of of thin metal, which create a, a, a spring effect for a linear movement of the stem. So on each end of the bellows, uh, there is a weld ring, and um, the top uh, of the the top weld ring is 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 welded to the to the bonnet, and uh, on the bottom and the bottom uh, you weld it to the stem, and that way you can uh, yeah you can uh, create uh, that fully tight uh, seal that there cannot be any leakage through the stem packing. So bellows uh, overall can have uh, very long delivery times and, and sometimes are, are difficult to obtain. Uh, so in many cases, these valves are non-commodity products. And uh, yeah, therefore, Redpoint keeps a, keeps a wide range of bellows on stock for valves up to uh, uh, four inch. And uh, also our bellow sealed valves uh, will have a lead time around the six to uh, 10 weeks uh, 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 range. And of course, fully according to, to the client specifications. The materials that we uh, we stock for the bellows are uh, stainless steel 321 and also Hestloy C276. But in many uh, uh, or other common materials are uh, 316 uh, titanium and, and also uh, Inquinel 625 for bellows. But we, we made a choice to, to keep uh, uh, 321 and C276 on stock because in many cases, um, yeah, the, the the 321 is acceptable when 316 Ti is specified, and also with with uh, Inconel 625, you see that a lot of cases uh, C276 Hestloy is also accepted. But if not, we can also uh, supply it with uh, those kind of materials. So it's all possible. And the, the second uh, point that they mentioned were uh, exotic materials. Well, Redpoint uh, uh, is working with exotic materials uh, for a very long time. We have a lot of experience, um, yeah, of course, with, with the nickel alloys, with, with the Hest alloys, the, the, the C22 or the, the C276. Uh, you have the Inkeloy series, uh, the Inkeloy uh, 800 series or 825. And the Inconel 625 or 600, and, and the Monels 400 or K500 for, for the stronger parts. And um, yeah, we also work with a lot of uh, uh, different types of stainless steels. For example, the, the, the heat resistant stainless steels uh, like the 321s or the, the 347 series, um, with or without uh, high carbon content, depending on the, on the, on the required temperatures. Um, Duplex is often uh, nowadays more, or yeah, in some cases, commodity items. They stock it more and more, um, but there are a lot of times uh, customer requirements on the duplex itself that make it more difficult and still a non-commodity product. And super duplexes, uh, we see a lot coming by for the offshore, for example. Stainless steels and carbon steels, we use them also a lot for special designs or uh, due to customer requirements. But there are also uh, special grades of stainless steel, for example, uh, uh, 6MO or uh, urea grades stainless steel. Uh, and also for carbon steel, you have uh, the normal A105 and, and A350 LF2. But um, there are also 
different grades, for example, A350 LF3 or A350 LF6. Uh, and, th and those are definitely also uh, non-commodity products. Um, yeah, titanium, we supply many valves in titanium, uh, not only in, in the common grade two, but also in the grade three. We use grade five for, for, for uh, products or, or parts of the valve that need to be stronger. Um, and also for certain processes, we even see grade seven or grade 12. And zirconium is, is usually um, used in the mining industry. And uh, yeah, to work with all these kinds of different materials is really uh, difficult. You really have to have uh, people in the factory who know what they are doing. They're working with expensive um, materials and um, yeah, they have to use not only their craftsmanship, they have to have the right tools. And um, for example, zirconium is, is also a material that's very difficult to machine. Um, it, it can even self ignite. So it's, it's actually dangerous to work with those kind of materials. You need to take all the, the right precautions if you, if you work with such materials. And um, yeah, so it's interesting to see uh, how, how, how these guys in the factory uh, work and, 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 and what they can do. Um, so yeah, non-commodity products, uh, there, are, there are various um, examples of this. Uh, of course, a non-commodity product is, is, yeah, a commodity product is basically uh, a very standard valve design uh, for, for, for made for mass production. And, and um, yeah, most of the times the, these, these items are, are just kept on stock somewhere. And um, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, Pepijn. Um, if you, if you look at uh, the, the mentioned uh, uh, criteria um, from an engineering point of view, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on, on, on that from, from your uh, point of view? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Yes, thank you, Jeske. Um, yes, I can. Um, uh, well, our engineering department is set up to accommodate these three criteria with flexibility and a deep understanding of a broad range of standards. Each valve order is seen as a project existing mostly of one-offs or a small series of sometimes 50 or more with their own development curve, testing and evaluation. This intrinsically linked, uh, uh, intrinsically linked to this process is that it, this yields lessons learned. Uh, and this resulted in a lot of experience in valve development. And subsequently, and all uh, lessons learned from previous projects can be drawn from and can be implemented for similar problems in other applications. So that the end user will benefit from our experience in what may be uh, a totally different field. An example is solidification. That happens in several processes, but the issues related to solidification can be solved with features that are universal. So that a valve that we make in titanium for a PTA plant can have similar features to a valve that we do in carbon steel for slurry. This is just an example of special design in combination with somewhat sp uh, special materials. This way of working also helps us in our fast track approach because we do not have a standard product, but we do utilize standard components for different materials and orders. We can do this because we utilize a well uh, implemented PLM system. And because of that, we can design the valve in question modularly so that we can provide our customers with fast track delivery. Okay, uh, back to you, uh, Jeske. Yeah, okay, thanks for, Pine, for, for explaining. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's understood that, that we, um, uh, yeah, we use our experience in, in, uh, in previous orders for, for new designs and, and then, yeah, actually uh, upgrade our quality of our valves, uh, yeah, each time with, with lessons learned. So it's good to, good to hear. Um, so I wanted to, uh, to tell a little bit more about uh, non-commodity valves and, and start with, with the special uh, applications. So Redpoint is, uh, is strong in, in the oil and gas market, uh, as mentioned before, but we also have, uh, have product lines in, in, in PTA, um, in the fertilizer industry, 
we, we uh, make cryogenic valves, but also high temperature valves for, for up to over 800 degrees Celsius. So that, that's pretty extreme. Um, high pressure valves uh, up to 10,000 PSI, 4,500 pounds, and, and other special services, for example, oxygen, uh, chlorine, um, ethylene oxide for these type of uh, 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 valves that need to be cleaned. Um, sulfuric acids, which is a difficult medium, especially in higher concentrations. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, on the next slide, um, I, I will go a little bit deeper in some of uh, some of our special applications. Uh, so a service in, 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 in the process of making uh, PET bottles, the, the plastic bottles that, that everybody knows. Um, yeah, there, there uh, is actually a very interesting part of that process where, uh, yeah. where they use PTA, which is called uh, purified tetraprolytic acid, difficult name, uh, so for short PTA. And, and uh, in, in that, uh, where they use this PTA, you, you really see that this is a corrosive medium and, and they, uh, they uh, use uh, titanium as a material for piping and valves. So uh, yeah, what, what we see is that there are a lot of uh, uh, problems that, that uh, our customers have with, uh, with valves that they have in place. And uh, yeah, we actually help uh, our customers in, in this sector to uh, modify valves that they have uh, in line, which have problems and also uh, yeah, deliver our valves with, with a specific sheet configuration um, and also materials that we use for, for durable solutions in, in this difficult process. So on the picture you can, uh, on the left, you can see how the cavity looked from a valve from, from, uh, from another supplier that, that we got here in house to, to modify. And um, yeah, you can see that, it, that, that the medium has, has completely uh, uh, blocked the cavity and also blocked the ball from turning. And you can see on the on the uh, on the second picture how it came out of the cavity. So this medium is is very uh, very tough. And on the right, you can see how the sheet looked that we took out of that valve. So it was actually completely broken. It, it when when our uh, uh, mechanic touched the the sheet, it 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 fell actually apart. Um, the springs were full of uh, media and also compromised to to properly work. So these were difficult uh, uh, problems that they have, and uh, yeah, we modify we modify these valves with uh, with our uh, own uh, design and and uh, seat construction, and uh, yeah, then uh, the valve is uh, really fit for purpose and uh, do not have these uh, these problems anymore. Uh, yeah, cryogenic valves. Well, like I explained, it, these are in some cases not commodity products. Um, sometimes there are special materials or additional requirements, and then valves from stock. Sometimes we see that that there are even uh, stock valves used, which are modified with a, with a bonnet extension. But that's not always accepted or acceptable. Um, and uh, yeah, if you can see on the on the photo uh, on the slide, we we. For this valve, we, we had, a, had a design validation um, in our development stage for cryogenic valves where we um, have type tested uh, uh, the valve to uh, following Shell's uh, 77300 uh, uh, design validation test procedure. So, yeah, the, uh, we, we have uh, validated our design with, with many operation cycles, but also uh, temperature cycles in, in the test itself. And then the, the leak rates were very uh, stringent. So we really know that, uh, that we provide quality, uh, quality products on that side. Um, yeah, oxygen, uh, of course, uh, applied in, in various phases. So uh, you have the liquid uh, oxygen or the gaseous oxygen, but also in temperature wise, you have it in cryogenic applications, but also at higher temperatures. So there are actually uh, three things uh, yeah, that, we, that we always uh, consider. Uh, so yeah, of course, the valve design. Um, all edges in the valve are, are chamfered, uh, deburred, rounded. Um, yeah, we, we make sure that there is uh, very low friction, that there is not any galling. Um, so this is really according to also the, for example, the ASTM uh, standards that are there for, for oxygen service. Besides that, uh, the materials are very important. 
So of course you need to use uh, fire resistant materials as this uh, is, is very, uh, yeah, very dangerous medium with regards to, to fire. Um, and, and in general, we use approved sealing materials according to the BAM M M034 list. So uh, yeah, on that side, uh, the, the materials are, are covered. And after the valve is uh, machine designed and the materials are there, then of course preparation, the valve needs to be prepared for the service. So uh, we, we uh, assemble it uh, completely oil and, and grease free, and it's also uh, cleaned for properly for oxygen service. Uh, we have our own uh, cleaning procedure, but uh, sometimes we also follow the client specification. It depends a little bit and it's always in, in uh, agreement. Yeah, fertilizer, of course, uh, an important industry, a growing industry. Um, we have a special line for fertilizer industry. Uh, we also have a brochure and um, yeah, the part in the process where we focus on are uh, the urea um, part, nitric acid and ammonia. And um, yeah, if you look at the challenges, especially in, in the urea process, uh, the medium of in, in the fertilizer urea process is, is very corrosive and, and highly uh, crystallizing. Um, so in, in the design, you really have to take, uh, take that into consideration. It's a very difficult uh, medium. And uh, yeah, you have to, to minimize uh, the dead spaces in the valve. Uh, for example, we, we, we make uh, the stem, uh, we treat it as, uh, or with, with colesterization, we colesterize the stem. We apply a guide with a scraper function uh, when the crystals uh, stick to the stem. Uh, the obturator is, is, is stellated on the, on the full face instead of only uh, the ceiling area. Um, yeah, disc and, and, and stem are made integral. Those kind of features are in our valves, which um, which make this valve fit for purpose in, in, in the way uh, is, that is required for, for this industry. So also the materials, the, these are difficult materials to, to get, definitely not commodity products. Um, we work with uh, in, in the urea process a lot with, uh, with 316 uh, um, urea grade stainless steel, but also 310 MOLN. Um, in the nitric uh, grades, you see uh, uh, 310L, or uh, alloy 1815, but also uh, grades like uh, 904L stainless steel and 6M over super duplex uh, are present in, in these plants. And yeah, besides that, we, we are familiar with, with, uh, with the various uh, licensor specifications that, uh, that these uh, industries uh, have. For example, uh, Stanley Carbon, uh, Saipem, Tojo, these, these kind of specifications we, uh, we can adhere to. Yeah, also non-commodity, uh, a lot of times we, we get the request to deliver valves with an actuator. Um, on the left, you can see uh, a gate valve with a, a multi-turn electric actuator. We can do pneumatic linear actuators in center for uh, globe valves, uh, but also for the quarter turn valves, uh, for the ball valves. Um, yeah, we can do the, the rack opinions for, for the smaller ones or, or the scots and yokes for the larger ones. In many cases, an end user uh, or a distributor will take care of this themselves. So that is always in agreement, but it is good to know that Redpoint, Redpoint can also uh, do this if, uh, if, if there is no possibility uh, for the client to take care of it. So, and in some cases we also need it to, to test the valve for, for mostly with, with linear or multi-turn applications. Yeah, when the valve is, uh, is manufactured, then um, testing is, uh, is uh, of course, uh, important to uh, make sure that the valve is, uh, is working, is uh, quali qualified, and, and, and also has the, has the quality control. Um, we, we, do, uh, non we, can, we can do non-destructive testing, uh, uh, ultrasonic or radiographic, uh, on, on mostly on the raw materials. We can do a, a PMI. You can see that on, on the top left picture. It's it's with a with a yeah a gun as you as you uh, call it. It's a it's positive material identification. So you can see that the machine parts are actually from the material that they are supposed to be. You can measure the the, the composition. 
liquid penetrant examination or magnetic particle examination for surface examination on, on materials. So you can uh, see if there are no cracks in the materials or any other uh, uh, things that are not good. Um, extended hydro testing with some customers who require that. That is something that, uh, that of course, we can do here in house. Fugitive emissions are uh, much uh, are very important and, and, and getting more and more important. Um, we have uh, all the possibilities to do uh, production uh, uh, fugitive emission testing, so for example, to, to uh, ISO 15848 uh, here in house. Uh, high pressure gas testing, we can do that uh, uh, in a bunker. Uh, high temperature testing or low temperature testing for cryogenic service. Um, and non commodity products often uh, have uh, special testing on the material itself, either specific corrosion testing or impact testing in, in various uh, directions. Fire safe testing is, is something we come across uh, on a regular basis here at Redpoint because we have so many special designs, uh, engineered products then a lot of time the customer uh, would like to have a fire safe test, especially if the scope is a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, we, we have done many, many fire safe tests over the years and um, uh, probably more than, than very, uh, for, or a lot of other very big manufacturers because, um, because they usually test one valve and make thousands of them. Um, so yeah, we really have, have a lot of lessons learned and, and experience with these kind of things. So we can really, really uh, say with confidence that, that we have a perfectly fire safe design for our valves. Uh, yeah, ferroxyl and phenantroline testing that's on the on the bottom. I've, I've put it in because uh, it's, it's a very strange test. Sometimes we see, uh, we come across these kind of tests that, that yeah, we think, okay, what is this? What, what, what exactly do we need to do on this? And so we had to investigate and uh, yeah, take care of it uh, so we can deliver the valve to, to customer specification. And, and in this case, ferroxyl uh, and phenantroline testing is, is um, a test to uh, measure the iron contamination of titanium materials. So pretty specific. Uh, yeah, one, one other thing is, is that you see non-commodity valves in, in, uh, in MTOs um, that you come across. Uh, yeah, a lot of the items can be easy to find, maybe on stock. And there are uh, some valves, which I've made blue in this uh, overview, um, which you can see that are very difficult to obtain, can have long lead times. Um, yeah, it could delay a project potentially. Uh, so uh, in those cases, we are happy to to step in and provide a quick solution for uh, yeah the more difficult uh, items in the scope. And sometimes, uh, yeah, a bulk supplier declined uh, due to um, technical specifications or maybe low quantities. Um, sometimes they are just not able to offer and. Um, uh, there can be can be various reasons, but uh, all those reasons uh, we can we can step in. Uh, we can even do a reverse engineering, as you can see on the picture. So this was a special valve that came out of a line with one of our customers, and um, yeah, it was uh, not something that you can buy easily somewhere else. The original manufacturer did not exist anymore, and uh, the customer came to us for help, and we uh, we did all the measurements on this valve. We took it apart and. Uh, we created a, a, yeah, a great uh, new valve for them, which was working uh, perfectly for, uh, yeah, I don't know how many years. And uh, yeah, that, that is also something that, uh, that we can do. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, Tim, can you uh, maybe explain a little bit on the next slides again uh, with, with regards to, to uh, 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 yeah, what, what are the best, um, uh, uh, RFQs, yes, fits RFQs. Thank you for uh, for for us. Uh, yes, 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 I can do it definitely. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at uh, at, at this table. Uh, so to give you um, a more general view about where our strength lies. Uh, so for example, the the MTO one stage and, and the feed studies, they are mostly focused on the on the bulk items. So the yeah, the, the focus there is on on price and manufacturers in low-cost countries, in best-cost countries. 
so yeah, having said that, um, when projects are driven by price and, and low cost valves are acceptable, uh, then Redpoint is not a good fit. Uh, also, when there's a focus on, on commodity valves, so for example, valves with low pressure or valves in, in basic materials, uh, there will be a lot of competition and that's not uh, where our, uh, our strength lies. Um, yeah, we are more involved in, in, in the phase where the bulk of the materials is ordered. So in, in the MTO4, MTO5 stage. Uh, so yeah, if the long lead items are ordered and in the case client forgot to order certain valves uh, or if valves are supplied that do not meet the, the customer specifications or expectations, um, yeah, or they fail, uh, then there is a need for an urgent solution. And, and that's where we uh, step in. Uh, also, yeah, many clients, they have very stringent specifications. We, sh we see that increasing over the last years, uh, especially, and not every supplier, they can comply to that. So um, we also uh, supply uh, valves in, in short lead times, um, but also in combination with the stringent specifications. Also, yeah, when there's a need for uh, exotic materials uh, or for valves uh, for specific applications, as, as shown, uh, as both options shown by Jeske before, uh, yeah, it's a good idea to approach Redpoint to uh, offer you a solution. So you had a question to ask yourself is, is how can Redpoint help you? Um, so yeah, how many companies you know act quickly to your needs? Uh, if you have a problem, then you want uh, a, a quick solution. You want a quick respond, a response. So uh, when we are approached, we understand that it's urgent and that there's a, a need for a quick solution, a quick offer. Uh, so yeah, that's why we reply uh, and, and quote within uh, 24 hours and in some cases when necessary, uh, even on the same day. Even though um, yeah, we are not the only manufacturer supplying the, the type of valves that, that we showed you earlier, um, it's important to remember that, that the success uh, of a valve, so yeah, whether the valve will fail or, or work very well in your, in your system, that it's all about the details. That's very important to remember. So yeah, having a lot of uh, technical knowledge about the, the, the processes and the potential issues coming with those, uh, uh, in those situations, yeah, we, we know what features are important uh, to make a valve successful and to prevent uh, costly doubt times due to valves that are, are failing because they are just not built for that application. So you have to supply valves in, in the short lead times. We make use of, of bar material or force bar materials. Uh, in some cases, we have, uh, well, we have uh, force to shape item in stock, which we can utilize uh, when possible. And if there's more time available, um, then yeah, then we have access to, to costings in exotic materials as well. So yeah, well, we understand um, your specifications and we also understand how critical uh, clear communication is. So um, yeah, it's important for us that we, um, that we keep communicating in due, uh, during the entire order process. So yeah, that, now we're at the end of the webinar. I would like to thank uh, everybody for, for taking the time to attend. Um, if you have a problem and if you think that Redpoint can help you uh, solve this, then please approach us by phone or send an email to info at trilliumflow.com. Um, we will be returning in the near future with another webinar where we will uh, go more into depth in uh, specific applications. So we hope to see you all there all again. Uh, we will now proceed to the, to the Q&A section. Yeah, thank you, uh, Tim. And uh, we got some some questions um, that we will uh, now answer. Um, so first of all, I, I see that somebody uh, asked if um, uh, if our valves are uh, uh, registered with the uh, uh, Canada Ontario uh, TSSA. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not really sure about TSSA, but we we have uh, the uh, all the, the the CRN approvals for for the Canadian market. So for all the province, provinces, there are some exemptions. Uh, for example, in British Columbia for line valves, um, but for CRN, we 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 are fully covered, and. Um, 
Yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. If there's anything on uh, specific on TSSA, then uh, please let us know. Then I need to uh, take a look at that, what exactly it is, and, and provide you a more detailed answer on that. Um, so one one of the questions is uh, if if we request a, a special in, inspection for cast bodies, uh, according to uh, to ESMA section uh, eight. Um, so beyond the standard per per per, per B sixteen point thirty four, if it will impact the delivery uh, of of uh, maximum ten weeks. So uh, yeah, maybe uh, Tim, can you can you answer that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, well, I think that I see that that question is is asked earlier in the in the presentation. So later on, I I advise that um, we to utilize the short. Well, to to achieve the short lead times, we make use of the bar force bar materials or or some force to shape items that we have on stock. Uh, if there's more time available, then uh, we we can make use of costing. So now the question is about uh, will it increase the delivery time of ten weeks? So yeah, a costing that's not uh, 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 yeah it's not something that's available in ten weeks. So if you think about ten weeks. You think about the the bar force bar or or for the stock force to shape items so uh but nevertheless um yeah those additional examinations it i will not affect uh the lead time of a costing that much not going to take long a lot of uh, additional time but not the 10 week range okay um so there's also a question um somebody's asking uh, is, is it possible to to fire te test uh, the gate valves so um Pepin, can you can you uh, answer that question please uh yes yes um uh, yes it is possible and uh, yes we have done that also uh, a lot of people uh, uh think uh, that gate valves uh, due to being metal seated and everything are inherently uh, uh fire safe um, but still, uh, there are uh, customers that uh, that request a, a certificate. So we have tested that, and uh, and it uh, yeah, and we passed. Um, we've we've tested also uh, dual plate valves, um, the <laughs> fire safe testing. So uh, yeah, we can we can meet all the all the strange uh, demands, and sometimes uh, it 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 helps uh, to to get that extra security for the customer, knowing that the valve will uh, will hold during a during the fire. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for buying. I, I also saw a question in um, in the chat, but the question is: Can you elaborate on the deviations you require with your products? But maybe it's misridden. But let me explain a little bit because um, in case deviations are acceptable, then um, yeah, we are not uh, the right uh, company to to approach and to submit a solution because. We make valves specific to uh, to the customer's requirements to yeah to meet their specifications. So our strength is not to have any deviations or at least as many as as less as possible. Uh, so no, we do not prefer to have any deviations. I also see uh, a question. Um asking if we are uh, linde approved um so yeah linde is uh, uh yeah we have supplied many valves to linde and uh we are linde approved and um yeah we we've been working with linde for 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 many years uh made mostly from germany of course and uh, uh for projects in the middle east uh, in asia uh and other parts of the world so uh yeah, I would like to ask you to to reach out to me uh, uh, if you would like to have some more information on that side, so uh, I can explain more and then also uh, share some references, for example. There's also um, somebody uh, who is asking. Um, if we uh, can create um, uh, nuclear documentation for reverse engineering of valves. Um, 
So yeah, Redpoint is is um, at the moment uh, not really uh, focused in the, in the nuclear industry because of the requirements there. But uh, Trillium, uh, the company that Redpoint belongs to, is uh, very much um, specialized in this area. So uh, also to um, to this attendee, I would like to ask to to write us an email, and uh, yeah, then we can also provide you with with some more proper information with regards to your uh, specific question. So yeah, um, uh, one of the questions that um, uh, that came in, um, and and maybe Tim, uh, you can you can answer that one. So uh, one of the questions was, what what is the quickest delivery you can do or have done? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, the quickest the delivery, delivery, I think, um, the, depending a little bit, it was, I think, a week or, or maybe two weeks that we we have supplied valves in. Yeah, well, that had to be in that short uh, time period. So, uh, yeah, we supplied, we supplied uh, those valves in about one to two weeks. I think, I think it were a stainless steel, stainless steel ball valves. I don't exactly remember the scope, but it was uh, that short. Another question that, that came in was um, uh, if we hold the, the, the API 6D monogram. I'm not sure if, if, if you already uh, mentioned that, but um, can you answer that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. We, have, uh, we are in possession of the API uh, 6D monogram. Uh, so yeah, we are audited by API on a, a pretty frequent basis so uh yeah that monogram is uh is in our possession we also have i, th I think you mentioned that earlier on uh the api 6a monogram uh so that's a very very tough audit as well um and also uh um, you know repeated uh on a on a frequent basis i think maybe yearly or bi-yearly so yes we are in the in possession of that monogram and uh yeah there was also another question is um how you are able uh, uh, to 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 deliver uh, the exotic materials, so the delivery lead time of exotic materials, um, so quickly. Uh, most materials, uh, uh, we have a good uh, uh, relationship with our suppliers, um, and um, uh, most exotic materials will take uh, maybe three, four weeks to 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 get. Um, so it's uh, it's a uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, getting the design done really quick uh, and ordering the material with all the specifications uh, up front, so that we can uh, uh, we can finalize the design and get it into the workshop uh, with uh, with just in time delivery for for when the material comes in. Also, there's there's uh, some stock available uh, somewhere, um, so we can we can uh, expedite some items and then wait for the for the for the body uh, material uh, in the two to three uh, to four weeks period and then uh, yeah it all comes together uh, in the end okay um, thank you sir thank you, so, 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 so it's maybe good to explain so when when we make a quotation um we we um supply a, a very detailed uh, valve data sheet and uh, when the order comes in then uh, our engineering department um, yeah, takes about two weeks to, to provide uh, a, a very detailed uh, GA drawing with, with the bill of material for, for client approval. And um, yeah, when, when, when the approval is there, then, then we proceed with, uh, with the purchase of, of the materials and, and uh, we start the production of, of the valve. So I think somebody is, uh, is asking um, about the, the fire test for the gate valves if that is an in-house certificate. Um, so, uh, well, if, if we do a fire test, we do not do that in-house. So we bring it to a specialized company, uh, a test center, uh, which, will, uh, which will do the test on our valves. So we, we get, uh, we get uh, the certificate from uh, a specialized third party. One of the questions was also about uh, uh, about castings. Um, so that we had mentioned that uh, that we are about uh, go about to sixteen inch and uh, in our valve scope and and somebody would like to know if that is also the case uh, with with castings. Um, 
can you uh, uh, explain that, Pepin? Can you answer that question? Uh, yes, uh, I can. Um, the, um, the, the, well, the limitations um, that, that we have, um, there are uh, more practical uh, kind. So we can, uh, we can always uh, uh, look into specific cases uh, 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 when they come by. So I suggest uh, that, you, uh, that you just uh, contact our sales uh, department to, uh, to look into uh, any, uh, any exploration of what's possible there. Yeah, thanks for Pine. Yeah, generally we would maintain the, the about the same uh, size range limitation. So that's that's maximum 16 inch as we use for for valves in in, in forged materials. Um, I see a question coming in with regards to uh, the double block and bleed uh, valves. So somebody's asking uh, if we make twin seal type valves with double block and bleed feature. So I uh, yes I can confirm that we that we make uh, uh, double sealing valves. Um, so double block and bleed valves can be provided with um, with a single ball um, or with a, a, a double ball uh, configuration. And with the single ball, uh, it's usually a trinium mounted valve uh, with with uh, or on both sides single piston effect seats. Um, or on both sides, double piston effect seats, but it's also possible to, uh, so, so you have a DBB or a, a DIB according to, to API 6D, but it's also possible to make a combination with a, a double piston effect seat and a single piston effect seat. Um, so the so-called DIB2 uh, as per API 6D. So there are various uh, configurations possible. We have, uh, answered most of the questions that we could and um yeah, we will uh, stick around for for a few minutes to see if if there's anybody else who would like to ask a question and then we're going to um uh to close the the, the webinar and uh yeah thanks everybody for for attending and uh yeah really appreciate it for your time and uh and we hope to hear from you uh, soon